Hi, good morning everyone. I hope everybody's having a really great Wednesday. Thanks for stopping in. Um, we're going to make this card today. I hope you can see it well with the lighting. I've got some competing lighting happening in the room. So this is a card with the blended seasons and um, I can't say enough really great things about blended seasons. I see that I've got the flowers enough away from my head to where it doesn't look like I'm wearing a crown of, of flowers today, which is really great. But anyways, um, thank you all so much for stopping in. And um, I wanted to just do the little phase part first. Um, you know, just to kind of, I don't always put myself on the camera because I've been told that I want, that the people want to get right to it. So I think a, a really quick hello is always good. So I have lots of artwork for the kids and I have a piece of happy mail this week. The kids have been at summer camp um, last week and this week. We have a local summer camp in our area for children and young adults with special needs or disabilities, um, particularly intellectual disabilities. And so the kids have been having such a good time. It's wonderful organization and I can't say enough good stuff about it. Um, so they've been getting lots and lots of arts and crafts. So I'm going to bring a few things over. Look at all this stuff. Um, I'm going to bring a few things over and I'm going to flip the camera around so you can get a really good look at it. And then I'll say hello to everybody because this far back I can't really, can't really see. Okay, so don't get dizzy. I'm going to be flipping the camera around now, okay? <laughs> Bear with me just a moment. All right, that's the view out my craft room. And here is my workspace. Zoom in just a tad, okay. So I've gotten a couple of photographs here. Put them where you can have actually have a look. I had to fold back the areas that had the other students in it, but um, just for their protection, because they did not okay being <laughs> in this video today. So um, this is Tripp and he is at the summer camp and that is some kind of snake that he can tell you about, but I really don't know what it's called. But it's a big yellow snake. They had a reptile person come and do some reptile sharing, and I'm glad I wasn't there to see it. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> and here is Nate, and Nate is with a, an alligator or a crocodile. I'm not sure exactly which one it is, but it is got a piece of, we call it um, electrical tape, or maybe it's duct tape, but it's got its mouth closed off so that it can't snap anyone and the kids are able to touch it. Isn't that really cool how they have that? I really love it. So I'm getting a look at the comments and I can see that everybody's here. So I'm, thank you guys. I'm, I'm really glad that you are taking the time to spend with me today. So on Reptile Day, Tripp made this as a craft. Isn't that cool? I love it. These camp leaders are so clever. They're doing such a good job with the kids. So I guess you can bend this anyway. It looks like it's a pipe cleaner. And Tripp also made this. And this looks like a snake with just, you know, some regular construction paper and couple of different colors and the mouth opens up. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I love it. 
And Trip had this one. This little turtle has lost its head somewhere. I don't know where. And Nate created this one. Looks like it's, this actually might have gone to this. I don't know, it's, things are kind of getting a little mixed around. I'm hoping to put everything into a, um, into a box for them to look back on. But this was created on Reptile Day. So Nate made a multicolored turtle and Trip just went with the basics. This head's gonna have to do for both of them. And they put it on like a little plate. They had sports day yesterday and I did a lot of special Olympic events. And so we have this fun little footballer who is on a toilet paper roll. Isn't that cool? And the end of last week, Trip made this really pretty wind cat, uh, what do they call it, dream catcher. If I can untangle it here. Maybe it's not supposed to be, there we go. But I like how they threaded everything through, just a regular paper plate. Oh, this is Nate, Nate made this. And they've got some feathers and beads down at the bottom. Really cool. And then here's this really pretty, I guess we're going to call it a collage. And it's got different animals. That's the one theme that I can see. Except for the gingerbread people, they're not really animals. <laughs> Very cool. Hi, Lynn. Yeah, you aren't far from me. Um, I'm in Cumberland County in New Jersey. So my kids go to the Ark of Cumberland County, A-R-C. And that's where they have their special education program. Very cool that you're so close to me. I love that. So a little bit of housekeeping. I've got my host code and I put it in the video description as well for the month of August. And by using the host code on your orders that are $149 or less, it allows me to be able to put an extra little special gift in your thank you card when you place an order in my online store. Hi, Philomena. Yeah, you're not far either. You're in Utica. Very cool. So you can get to my shopping by going to JennyHoldDesign.com, click on Shop Now, and you'll go directly to my Stampin' Up! store. We have some promotions that are still going on in August, and that would be bonus days. And um, for every $50 in product that you order, there is a $5 coupon code that's going to be sent to you in an email directly from Stampin' Up! So you'll have to keep, keep track of that and you'll be able to use it in September. Very cool. Hi, Miss Kay. How are you? <laughs> Karen is, uh, good morning Karen, Karen is uh, way across the <laughs> gingerbread man, yes that's funny, that's funny. Um, during the month of September when you're using your bonus days coupons, then if you place an order that is $250 or more, you can get a free exclusive pack of paper. And it's a really nice pack of paper and here is a little preview of it here. And I'll be including this in with my holiday catalogs. There's always a little, um, like a little sampler of the new designer series papers that are coming out in each catalog. So I was able to get that into the catalogs, which we'll be ma mailing very soon. Speaking of catalogs, here is the new holiday catalog. And it's packed full of wonderful stuff. And you can see some of the things that are going to be coming to you in the little preview pieces here on the front. So Color Your Season is still going on, but it's going to be for a limited time. The Color Your Season promotion covers three different products. And we're going to be using those three products today. It is for the Blended Seasons stamp set. You can see the really great things you can do with a stamp set here. It's also for the Stitched Seasons framelit dies. 
and these double stitch window openings are beautiful and there's some wonderful independent dies as well. And then there's the watercolor pencils that are a limited release as well. And that's a misconception that I've had several people asking. We've got a little bit of different information floating around the internet about the watercolor pencils. What we've been told from Stampin' Up! is that these pencils are available while supplies last for a limited time and they could possibly be in a future publication. I'm so glad that I was able to get them because these colors are really great. And you can see a better look at them here. And they're a really great complement to the first set of watercolor pencils because the first set of watercolor pencils doesn't have every color that Stampin' Up! offers. They only have 13 pencils and then there's 10 pencils here which gives you a total of 23 wonderful colors to be able to use in product projects. Ah, so Betty and Miss Kay have got them. Joanne has hers coming. Fran loves it too. I'm glad you guys are getting lots of use out of it. I have, I have made some really fun projects last month and this month with the Blended Seasons bundle and I'm really excited. Uh, I love those double stitch. You guys know, if you follow my channel, you know that I use those dies all the time. So we're going to have a piece of Happy Mail and then we'll jump right into our project. But I first wanted to mention that if you place an order, an order in my online store and you notice one of these cards in your thank you card with your gift, don't toss it out because on the back side, this is a redemption reward that you get. Collect 10 points and you can choose a $50 product item from my online store or from my Stampin' Up! catalogs, you know, however you browse your products, but collect 10 of these cards and you get to choose a free $50 item. So you earn one of these points for every $50 in product that you order in my online store. So be on the lookout for these and do not toss them out because you could be losing. Keep your points together. So I have an absolutely stunning card to share with you today. And this card was created by my friend Betty. And I have to show her envelope art because this is just incredible. It's beautiful and I absolutely love all of the marker work that she's done here. And then check out the card. Speaking of the bundle, <laughs> this is amazing. Betty has done such a wonderful job. And it opens up and you can see that she's got the peekaboo area here. It's just absolutely beautiful. And I love how you have used this. You've done such a great job, Betty, with this designer series paper, with a whole card. And then there's the subtle embossing here. There's just all kinds of wonderful stuff. Beautiful, beautiful. And thank you so much for sending it to me. And I love how you use those artisan pearls and there's lots of Wink Estella. It's just amazing. And Betty's right here with us. She's watching with us. So you guys can tell Betty exactly how much you like it. Because I absolutely adore it. Well, let's get started on our project. This, again, is the card that we're going to create. It's on my blog today. Uh, JennyHallDesign.com If you go over to my blog, this is a card that you will see featured. And I thought it would be a good thing to show exactly how I created this. And it focuses, to me, on the watercolor pencils. So um, that's one of the questions I get is, well, how do I use the pencils? Do we just do coloring with it? Do we use a watercolor, a paintbrush? So we're going to dispel some of the mystery that comes with this today. So this card is... Not quite a one layer card, but it's not far from it. It's got the beautiful, subtle embossing folder as the card front. And then we've got those double stitching dies and then done a little bit of ink blending too. So 
This is a well-rounded technique card all over, but we're going to create it again from start to finish. So we're going to start that by using the embossing folder, and I'll get a few things out here today. Here's another look at the Blended Season stamp set. And this is the embossing folder that we're going to use called the Subtle. And it is one of the dynamic embossing folders. It's textured. It has like a 3D texture to it. And I've got my card front already cut. So I'm going to just put it into this folder and emboss it. Oh, thanks guys. I'm really glad that you like this card and that you like Betty's card. So let's get the big shot. And because this is one of the special embossing folders, I'm gonna kind of turn it this way. Because this is a special embossing folder, we're not gonna use every plate that we have, that we standardly use with the big shot, um, with the regular thinlet dies or framelit dies. So I'm going to take this all the way down, and I use the, the newer base plate, but we're going to take this thin die adapter off and just have the Big Shot platform. And when you buy a Big Shot from Stampin' Up, this is the plate that you get. There was an older one that had the tabs that you flip open, but this is the standard plate that comes now. Fran says this is her newest favorite folder. Me too. I really like it. So because my card is already, my card base is already created, I'm going to take this, and, and it is a directional folder. If I put it in kind of crooked, then my lines from the embossing are going to go crooked. So I want to bring this folder, and it embosses all the way up here to the edge. So I'm going to just bring it here to the edge. I'm going to get my paper straight by kind of holding it at an angle, and that will help me to make sure that I've got it, I've got it straight in my folder. And I'm going to place it down on this base plate and then use one of my clear plates just one doesn't matter if it's the clean one pretty one <laughs> or one of the the most loved ones it's okay either way we go Karen has not seen this in person yet Karen you really have to touch it to appreciate all of the detail that it has it's it's really nice so I'm gonna have to apply a good little amount of pressure to get it through because it is one of the extra thick embossing folders. And we'll see exactly how well it shows up for you. So I'm hoping that some of the shadows will be picked up. Let's see here. I'm hoping it will. It, it looks a little bit like a natural, like linen or a natural paper. Um, it is, it is really nice just to use as a card front. I'm really happy with how it turns out, and it's it's such an easy way. Embossing folders are really affordable, and they are a very easy way to be able to add something special to your project. So I'm going to put this all back together by putting my thin die adapter back on and my well-loved base plate. And then this is the plate that I normally use to go on top. We'll be using that again in just a moment. Joanne is asking, what is the, it's the embossing folder that you're asking about? It's called, I'll show you the front page, the Subtle Dynamic Textured Impressions Embossing Folder. So I just call it the Subtle 3D Folder, S-U-B-T-L-E. And this is item number 143706. And it's really, really nice. It gives that, that look of, you can see all of the little marks here on the cover. It's just really, really nice. So in our finished 
card, there's going to be lots of texture on the front. Hi, Narelle. How are you? Thanks for stopping in today. So we have our card base now created. Then we're going to start working on building up some of the elements for the front of the card. Yes, Joanne, this one is a good addition to your wish list for sure. The subtle folder is going to look, work really good for holiday cards as well, I think. So to create this labeled look, I'll set these things aside. Then we're going to use the medium and the small label dies. And I'll show you exactly how they come out. So this is the small die here in the middle. It's got the one that has the ink blending in purple. And then this is the medium die that is the larger frame to it. So we're going to cut both of these at the same time, but before we do that, I want to do a little bit of inking on one of the pieces we're going to cut. So there is a difference between adding ink before something's die cut and after an item is die cut. There, there's a distinct difference. And what the difference is, is when you look at how the little pieces are cut into the paper, then if, that, if those pieces were cut before the ink was added, then the ink will sink down in there and be darker and more concentrated than if it were already on the paper and then the indentation just pushed the paper down. Because the little dash marks that are the stitching, if you want it to stand out and be darker, then by all means add the color afterwards. But if it were, you want it to be just a solid color as this is, then that's where the difference is in adding the color to the paper before or after you make the die cut. So this is Gorgeous Grape, and we're going to use Gorgeous Grape here. I'm going to do the inking on this little scrap of paper before we do the die cut. Using the stamp pad and a sponge dauber is the easiest way. There's also the ink brayer that you can use, but what I want to get the look of is I want this white space in the middle to remain, I want there to be a gentle fade in. I want it to it remain white and hold its integrity. So this is going to be my guide. I may pull it out here a couple of times, but I'm going to use this kind of to see if I'm getting everything colored the right way. So I've got a sponge dauber that's already used to being purple. And what I can do to help show what I'm talking about is to make some tick marks about a quarter of an inch on the outside edge of my die so that I know exactly where to do the fade in and where to, where to, where to get the color to start lessening up. But I want there to be color all the way to the outside piece of where I'm going to do the die cutting. So if I'm going a little bit in a different direction, um, some of my friends call it waffling, <laughs> then let me know. So the first thing to note is that there is always much more ink that is going to come off of the dauber or the brayer, whatever it is you're using. There's much more that's going to come off than what you really need. So the first thing to do is to dab it onto any type of scrap, scrap paper. It's up to you exactly which one to use. And that will get off some of that ink so that a lighter shade can come on and be what your finished project is, finished product. So I'm going to do a little bit of measuring here. You can see that we've got some subtle color coming up. So I'm going to try to not use any more ink and just, just stick with what's here on the, on the dauber. And I'm not applying any pressure at all. I'm just letting my finger float on the paper. 
This could be done with watercolor paper if you have more, more success with getting the colors to blend out a little better. The watercolor paper is a little bit more helpful. Looks like this, I was able to get a much lighter, much, much lighter shade. And this is going to have more purple color. I'm not sure if that's exactly what I wanted to have, but maybe we can get creative here. If I turn this around a little bit, then I still have that gentle fade in and I'll be able to cover up this area with one of the pieces of greenery. So I think this will work. That's what a lot of crafting is for me. It's just things that are in very impromptu, <laughs> kind of making do with, with the way things come out. Flying by the seat of the pants, as some people would call it. So now the Stitch Seasons framelits dies are going to cut away these two frame areas. And I'll bring the big shot back over from that. And we can just cut these pieces out. I could put them on at the same time with no worries. And this is going to have to go this way. And this is not the largest. There is another label that's quite a bit large, more large. Okay, kind of center. I'm looking at what's going to cut on the inside of the die. And then this guy here, I think I'll center it so that I can use the panel on another project because it's going to leave a stitching on the outside. That's the beauty of these double stitch dies. Okay, here we go. There's not a lot of cracking on my plates because these are not new plates. They are well loved. <laughs> there we go. So this will be a nice scrap piece of paper for me and I've got that subtle look. I, I went a little heavy on getting those um, the sponge dauber down. It always does that whenever I'm doing something live. <laughs> when, I'm, when no one's around and watching, I can get it to come out just right. Isn't that funny how that works? <laughs> so I can use this for another project. And now I'm gonna use this one again to create the frame area. So by using one die cut, I can use this for something else and it's going to it's going to turn up in another project that'll be really nice. I like having pieces that are already cut and ready to go. I'm sure you all do as well. So one more time through the big shot and then we'll be finished with it. So I'm going to use a little piece of washi tape this time. Can you guys hear me okay? I saw earlier that there was, um, Joanne had commented that she couldn't hear me. And it could be because I was so far away from the camera. Now this is the Pick a Pattern washi tape that's available in the annual catalog. It's it's got five different sizes, I think, and it's always a really great asset to have on hand. I'm going to line this up by where the little points are here. That should help me to keep it straight. So what we're going to do is cut away this area and it's going to create a hole in the middle. And then we're going to lay our purple blended piece right inside. And the inspiration for this project was, I, I'm not sure exactly where I was looking, but I think it was a movie 
that I remembered seeing at some point that had it had some beautiful architecture in Italy and just in random places there are these wonderful beautiful fountains or maybe like ornamentation that is built into a wall and if you notice on here then this part kind of seems to come out a little bit and it's an illusion but it it still it reminded me of these little basket areas that are on the it's like made out of concrete or stone I'll have to look up and figure out exactly what it's called so by taking away this extra part here we're able to lay this piece in in exactly the spot it, it's cut precisely and now we can decorate it in any way we like Hi, Nicola, how are you? Thanks for sharing, Anne-Marie. So today we are gonna use stays on, and I've inked up my stays on ink pad. I had not used it for such a long time, and I've gotten in my special cleaner from stays on. Whenever you use the permanent ink, it's important to make sure that you remove any of the ink with the special cleaner. So um, I had misplaced mine. It, it walked off. It went on walkie all by itself. And I'm just grabbing a tissue so that I can dab off after I have stamped. So your stays on is going to have this little protection, protective cover. And just make sure that you always keep the cover on that will help your ink pad from drying out. Just gonna check to make sure I get good coverage here. And I'm gonna line up on my grid paper those two little pointies on the side. And I'll stamp this where the top row of the sentiment is in the middle where those two little pointy areas are. There we are. I know there are lots of tips and tricks that everyone has about using the stays on, but I immediately use my little, and I don't give it a squeeze, I just rub it across the stamp, and then I blot it up with a tissue to get the excess off and it takes it off completely. So this is going to be what we are going to adhere directly down to the card. So I'm gonna let that cure for just a little bit and while we do that, we're going to stamp some of the images that are where we're gonna use our watercolor pencils. So I'm going to use this piece of scrap paper here. I'll just turn it over so it's not distracting. How many of us use our scraps? So I would keep this in my little scrap bin for sure because I might be able to get a die cut out of this, but I can always turn it over and have something happening on the other side. We're just going to give a couple of these. I used three on the original card and I've got um, three of them already colored and fussy cut on the side. That's the beauty of the magic of video. <laughs> prepping in advance to be able to get all of that done and save time. Okay. So I'm cleaning my stamp with the stays on cleaner. And blotting it up. So because this is going to get, use some watercolor pencils, 
It's why I chose to use all of them, to use stays on on everything. Let's grab those pencils again. And this is the assortment number two. This is the assortment that is available for purchase for a limited time. Betty loves to use her scraps too. I tell you, sometimes I can get something out of that scrap bin that gives me inspiration and ideas, uh, like the card that I featured yesterday on my blog with the look of Rick Rack. That was a lot of fun to create. So on these beautiful leaves, there's all sorts of ways that we can color them. I decided to complement the purple tones and make sure that I kept the integrity of the green. So the way that I approach the coloring is to start with the lightest color and just give it a light coat everywhere. I'm not giving a lot of pressure here. I don't have to get the base of the leaf colored because I know that that's going to be purple. And I do rotate my pencil as I'm coloring because it tends to give me a sharper point so that whenever I, when I get, when I want subtle coloring, I use the side of the pencil. And when I need something to be much more intense, then you'll, as you'll see in just a little bit, I'm going to use the point of the pencil and that's going to really intensify things for me. So this color is Granny Apple Green. So I've got my light base color. I'm going to go straight down to the dark color and then work my way back up. And my darkest color is going to be Gorgeous Grape. And I can start with a light coat, but I'm really wanting to go dark. So this took, this took a lot of work to get that purple really intense. So it's okay to start out with a light coat and then apply some pressure down towards the really bottom of the, of the leaf where it connects to the stem. And I'll do that by shifting to use the point and by applying more pressure. So I'm using kind of the side here, and then I would shift up to the point and really press down. And so that's going to give me the color at the base of the leaf. Here's a larger one here. So I'm going to put down that light purple first and then push, really intensify it and that's going to give me that look. But there's not just two colors on these leaves. You can probably see a lot more color action happening, and that's because I used a total of four colors on these leaves because I, I kept looking at it thinking that it needed to have a more depth of color to the, each of these leaves because there's, there's so much more going on in these leaves. So Fran's excited to get her pencils this week. That's great. I had a dream one night that I was using my new watercolor pencils and that one of them broke, like my kids had bro broken it or something to where I couldn't use it at all anymore and then it wasn't available. <laughs> it wasn't available for sale. And so I was stuck without that color. It's funny things that we all have dreams about. I don't remember which color it was though. Isn't that silly? Okay, so now we've got a nice good amount of color on each one of these leaves here. And I'll tell you what we'll do. Um, we're gonna use this kind of like as a first progression guide. Now the next color that I added was Coastal Cabana and this is going to give us just a little bit of a transition between the green and the purple. <laughs> Fran is suggesting that that's my hint to get a second box, yeah. It, it, it's very, very well that, that that's the case. 
So I'm going to test out what the Coastal Cabana looks like on this set of leaves. And you can see here that by adding this, and I'm not pushing too hard, this is like a medium pressure, that it kind of complements the Granny Apple Green in a very nice way. Now remember, we're gonna go back last and add the Granny Apple Green. But by adding this Coastal Cabana right in the mid area, it really adds a little bit something else. So I'm going to add it here where the transition, and you can see that these leaves are just really starting to come to life. And I'm not using any special coloring skills. You can see exactly what I'm doing. I am making sure that the color goes up into the green and down into the purple using a medium pressure. And it just really does something else to these leaves. So let's, uh, let's add that to each one of these. But we're not done yet. So you can see here that Coastal Cabana on the large leaf, you can see how, how it really just jumps up and gets the attention. So the last color that I used is Cherry Cobbler. Now Cherry Cobbler is not going to be the most prominent color that is on the finished product, but it is definitely going to be part of the overall effect. So I'm going to nestle this Cherry Cobbler in between the purple and the Coastal Cabana. And just like right here underneath where the Coastal Cabana lays, where that, that midline is, I'm adding just enough of that Coastal Cabana. And you can see here where it is that I'm putting it. But I'm moving it into the Coastal Cabana and down into the purple. So I'll start here, right where the line is between the purple and the Coastal Cabana, using light pressure. And this is going to give me a little bit more intention, attention to the purple. So it doesn't really show itself as being red in the finished product, but it helps the purple out. And there is red in purple, and it just jumps up and says, hey, this is wow, this is wow. So you can see that it's around here somewhere. So this is where I'm placing it. I can show you here on this area. It's right underneath the Coastal Cabana, but not down into the purple. So now I've got all four colors on one leaf. What happened to Coastal Cabana? It ran away. So now I'll be able to go back with my Granny Apple Green and really intensify the very tip of that leaf. And then I can bring some of that light green down into the sides. So isn't it funny how it takes four colors just to get this look? But I think it, it brings me back to the creation of colors, the color composition, to where it, you've got your primary colors and your secondary and your tertiary so it takes just the three basic colors to make everything else. And this is a really good way to, like if you want to enhance a purple, maybe add a little red and that could really help it out. <laughs> Thank you, Anne Marie, I'm glad you like this. <clears throat> Pardon me. So I have a blender pen. At this point, you could leave it as it is. There's, there's absolutely no reason why you need to touch any of these colors at all. There's a water brush or aqua painter, as we call it at Stampin' Up, and then there's a blender pen. So those, there's a couple of options the, to progress from here. So I'll show you what it looks like with the water brush, and I'm not going to squeeze this barrel at all, because if I do, then all my intense color is just gonna go away. It's gonna flood out. 
So I'm just going to activate the brush by, you know, roughing it up against a, the regular piece of paper here and maybe just muddling things a little bit like this. But these colors, what happens whenever you use the water brush is these colors are going to start moving. And when green and red mix together, then it oftentimes will equal mud. So you can see that it's not maybe my best look. Now, could it, if it's the look you're, you're going for, then that's great. So I'm gonna use the blender pen here. Oh, thank you, Fran, you're very kind. So I'm gonna take this blender pen here and I have much more control over where the color goes and with a less amount of fluid. And I can just very, very lightly move the color from the top of the leaf down to the bottom in certain places or maybe just move it back and forth like this. And what it's going to give me, you can see that it's already turning like a, a greeny brown um, you can see that it's already moving the colors away. The red is melted into everything and the green has come back out. But the intensity of the watercolor pencils is going away. It's, it's not going to hold quite the intense color that I put down. And I'm having to dab off every single time because every time I touch I get color on my blender pen. And if I don't want to bring that purple stuff up to the top, then I kind of have to get it off. And that's where I dab it off on, on the paper here. So what I did in this card was just very, very simply to muddle up some of the colors in certain regions, like do the light region of all of the, color, of all of the leaves and then maybe go back in after my brush is cleaned off, then go back in and do another section and mix around the next section. And pretty soon we have a leaf that has more of a gradient effect. I like the look that it has with just a little bit of muddling, not a heavy amount of muddling. That's, that's what I chose to have, but the great thing about art is that you are the one that's in control and you get to choose how you want it to look. So just for the sake of argument, I'm going to use the water brush or the aqua painter on this over here and show you what it would look like if we just kind of mixed around some things. That's with the three colors and this is just the one color. It works much better on a single color if you want it to use the watercolor pencils and the aqua painter together. I prefer the blender pen in some instances, but this is going to give you a much more even watery look. Um, if I were to do the same thing over here, then all these colors are just going to go into mud. They're just gonna make a big mud pile. So now is where I would take and do some fussy cutting on these leaves. There is not a die for this particular leaf, although the die set has a, it has a thing of leaves, if I can find it. There are some leaves here, and it has a couple of different styles. But if you just wanted the leaves that would echo this, then you could use this here, and you could color directly on die cuts. Um, that's that's also huh, funny that it's going to be on my YouTube channel tomorrow is I'm going to do watercoloring on die cuts. But this is where I would die cut and because of the magic of video and prep ahead of time, I have already colored and die cut enough to be able to create this card. So I know you don't want to sit through me fussy cutting and coloring. <laughs> for 20 minutes. So I'll clean a few things up out of the way. This is what we don't see whenever, whenever this is what editing of videos is good for. 
because when you sit down to watch a YouTube channel, the last thing you would like to see, I'm sure, is me doing my little cleanup pieces as I go. And I'm definitely a clean-as-you-go crafter. All right, so we will start attaching some things down to our card base. And remember, this is our textured side. You can hear it. This is the regular side, so we want the textured side up front. And I've got my two pieces here. So when I attached this previously, I did it in a couple of different ways. I'm going to use liquid glue, but I wanted to make sure that I got it centered first and foremost. And this little inside piece has a tendency to want to wiggle away underneath the outside frame. So first I will hold down, once I get it in place, I'm gonna hold that down so that I know that it won't move. And then I'm just going to start adding some glue to the opposite side. Ah! Of course it will do this on camera. So I've got the top part of this piece glued down. Now I'm going to do that. I'm going to have a big mess with liquid glue, it looks like. All right, so we've got the top part adhered, and then I'm going to adhere the bottom part of the inner piece, the purple one, but not the outside piece, because that's going to, um, we're going to put some things underneath it. Now I'll show you how I'm placing the glue. It's just a very simple little line of glue, and I'll push the purple in place. So the purple is going to stay. It's not going anywhere. So from here, we've got our wonderful little fussy cut pieces that can be fashioned in any way that we like. And this is going to go up underneath the edge here because again, I was looking for the the look of the fa of the stone fountains. Thank you, Philomena. So I've gotten these stuck onto a piece of post-it note. That way I knew they wouldn't run away. And once they're fussy cut, it's a really great time to be able to move them to any, any angle that suits well for your purposes. So I'm going to kind of just put this one here and this is the way it's cut, but I can move it and arrange it to where it comes down and around like this. Because the paper is really thin there in that area. So that's one side and I'm going to get it in place here by just putting a few pieces of glue, a little, couple of little drops of glue on the back side of the leaf under the frame. So by leaving this frame piece not attached, we can nestle lots of things around. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. You're very kind. And now I'm going to add one on the opposite side, and I want to be conscious of how t how high it's coming up so that it matches on both sides. So I'd like this to come up just a little bit more than this side, but not by much. So I'm going to put a little bit of the glue back here again on the back part of the leaves. And one of the leaves had fallen off, so... I'll add just a tiny drop to get that leaf back in place. There we are. And now the last piece, I have kind of a little bit of a different thought. I had placed it like this initially so that it appears, you know, that it's in and out of the medallion area. But I could also just do it like this and have it appear to be hanging out. 
So I'm going to do it differently for this card just because we know what it looks like this way and we can check on what it looks like the other way. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention is as you are placing things up underneath to be sure that okay, this one wants to it wants to run away again. But, but just be cautious of whether the bottom of the fussy cut piece will hang out over your frame area because this one here wants to it's very close to so I'll give you a good look at how I'm just pushing this bottom piece out of the way or I could trim it off all together but I don't want to go to all this hard work of getting everything exactly right and then have a piece that I'm going to have to pry the paper back up afterward so we're going to have this actually hang out in this manner but it won't come up this far I tell you design quandaries all right I think I'm gonna to have to go this way again because I don't my design eye is not going to be okay with having it having this much space at the bottom unless I can move this around enough hmm. I think we could do that we'll try it we're crafting on the fly. <laughs> These are the decisions that we all agonize over, I'm sure. So now I'm now I can make sure that I attach my bottom half of the frame in place and make sure that it's secure so that all of the pieces that are tucked underneath this bottom area are not going to come out. I'll make sure that I've got all the different areas with a little bit of glue, not a lot, just a little bit. Thanks, Philomena. I'm I'm glad that it that it helps you. Okay, so now this piece, I'm um, because it's more of one single fussy cut unit, I'm going to bend it and pull it down and I think that will help me design wise to be able to see that it's going to cover enough of the area and another little piece of liquid glue here and yes this is a lot of liquid glue for me I generally don't use it this much because I do have it all over my fingers now we're going to switch over to using the fine tip glue pen and we can use our trusty little take a pick tool and place a few sequins. Now these are not typical sequins, these are the Tranquil Textures Sprinkles. So the difference is starting to appear a little bit in these two cards. I got a much better blend on this card in the ink blending than I did with this one. This one is much more heavy handed, but I like how the flowers are kind of up a little bit more on this. And this is a different direction. This one was just a branch going straight up this way. And this one is tucked in and it appears to kind of be coming more like over the bowl. These little seed beads are fantastic. And inside the package are some clear ones. So I'm going to remove the top of my little take a pick tool, make sure my putty didn't get squished. And then I'm going to remove the other end. This is the removable end, and you do that by turning it to the unlock position. And I'm gonna take the tip off. So now I have a paper piercing tool all in one. Of course, you could always use your actual paper piercing tool to, to use to help things come off of the end. But I've got it as part of this unit here, so I'm going to use it as one unit. So the putty end is going to pick up some pieces like this and then the pokey end in my opposite hand is going to help me get them off of the putty end. See how it just comes off easy that way? So I can look around in my sprinkles and find a few more of the clear pieces. It looks like I've just about used most of them 
those are those little these little glass beads have just been wonderful to work with so that little pokey end is perfect to help me remove it from the tip this looks like it's one of the frosted ones there are some frosted and some clear beads that are in this set in this little case of sprinkles here's another one right here that one is also clear and we will place it over in this direction but it has a little purple tinge which is a nice benefit so these are called tranquil textures sprinkles and I've given my liquid glue the fine tip glue pen a little shake just to make sure that it's not settled in looky here I've got one more bead that's stuck to my pokey end the piercing end so I can just pick up with the take a pick drop a piece of glue and if it comes off right away that's great and if it doesn't I've got the piercing end that I can use to help get it back get it in place and to get remove it from the putty so I tend to use it in like a two-step way and the finger may also be required if it's a very stubborn sequin as often that happens there's a little piece of glue and if I just hold it here for a few minutes it might come off on its own and I just kind of twisted it away at an angle like if you are a cake decorator and if you have um, if you have done any work with a piping bag then as you as you pipe down then you always lessen up the pressure and turn away to um, to finish off your decoration with a twist and an angle so it's the same principle so I'm going to make sure that I cover this safely back up I don't want anybody to get injured my children will come into my studio at any time and I'm always worried that they're going to get a hold of something sharp so having it covered up is always a great thing so now we're ready to finish off the card for the inside and I'm going to put the lid back on this liquid glue and for the inside of the card I'm going to stamp that same image the leaf image but we're going to do it in gorgeous grape so if anyone has any questions about this project please this is a time to ask or if you're watching on the replay or watching on YouTube and you have any questions I'm happy to help there we go just a simple little and then I'm going to give a second generation in an opposite direction there we go and I always grab if this is stiff ink pad and the new ones are really they they need some TLC that I grab with my fingernails until they really get broken in this one's nearly there And we are nearly completed. Just a little bit of liquid glue. <laughs> it's my pleasure, Anne Marie. Anne Marie is saying that she likes all of the information, all those little tips and hints. And there we have it. We have recreated almost exactly the same card this one you can see especially with the grid paper away that this the color is much more intense on it and on this one I definitely got a much better blend and again you can get a better blend with watercolor paper so using the sponge dauber can really be tricky and in not having those those sponge marks show up 
but use whatever works best for you. The sponge brayer is another way to just work color in gradually, but we have enough of the white space here in the middle to keep the integrity of the project to uh, true to pretty much what it was. Thank you, Fran. I'm glad you like this card. So if anybody has any questions, then I will be around. You can leave a comment and definitely we will we will catch up. This is part of the Blended Seasons bundle that is a limited time only. And because it's only going to be available for a limited time, it's while supplies last. So I would urge you to definitely check out this particular product. Now, if you are shopping with me on my online store, then I have a special treat for you. I've got an online class that has six projects with video and a PDF tutorial that's free whenever you purchase this in my online store. Or you can go over to my tutorials page and it is available right now. And that's jennyhalldesign.com slash tutorials. Or you can just click the tutorials tab on my homepage. And you can scroll down and you will find the online class for this particular bundle. And there's it's six different projects with video and PDF. And I also have another bonus. If you purchase this Blended Seasons bundle from me in my online store, I've got another tutorial that is a mega pack with 20 to 30 project ideas just for this particular bundle of products. It can't be sold but it can be earned. I can share it with you and by, purchase, by purchasing I can give it to you as a reward. And I'll send some paper to be able to complete some of the projects from the six card series with the videos. So I really appreciate you guys taking the time to spend with me today and um, if you have any suggestions on any projects that you would like for me to demonstrate or any techniques, then please leave me a comment and let me know and I'll be sure to put it on my list. Oh, thank you guys for the hearts. So thanks again today for joining me and I look forward to spending time with you again next Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. on my Facebook page. And if you're watching on YouTube, then you can join in on YouTube as well. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching the video. Have a good day.